We're going to start with some definitions. So the first one we're going to do is variable. So the variable is the quantity that's being measured, and it'll change from study to study. So if we're doing a study on intelligence, the variable is going to be IQ. If we're doing a study on shoe size, the variable is going to be the size of someone's shoe. So it changes from study to study, and there's two types of variables that we're going to look at in this unit. Discrete and continuous variables. So discrete variables can take on only specific values. So a discrete variable is something like hair color. You can have blonde hair, you can have brown hair, but there's nothing in between. Now a continuous variable can take on an infinite set of values. So it would be something like time or temperature. You have one degree, two degrees, and then an infinite number of degrees in between. So depending on what the variable is in your study, you're going to do different graphs. With discrete variables, you're going to use a bar graph. With continuous variables, you're going to use a histogram. Now the two graphs are pretty similar. We set them up in the same way. So I'll show you how to set them up. So here's the table that you're going to want to make. You're going to have your variable on the x-axis right here and your frequency on the y-axis. Now this is a discrete variable and you can tell because it's got single values here, one, two, or three. If this was a continuous variable, you would have ranges of data, like one to three, two to four, etc. So what you do is you get your variable, you count up the number of times it appears in the data set, and that's going to be your frequency. And then you plot the variable on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis, and you end up with a bar graph. So don't forget on your bar graph, you have a title, you label your axes, and in a bar graph, the difference between a bar graph and a histogram is that the bars are not touching in this one. In a histogram, since it's a continuous variable, the bars are going to be touching with no space between each one. So let's go back to the table for a second because there's more we can do with the frequency. There's two other types of frequencies that we tend to use, the cumulative frequency and the relative frequency. The cumulative frequency keeps a running tally of the variables as you go on. So each group contains its own data and all the previous data. So as we can see, the first group contains five, the next group contains its own six plus the previous five, so we write 11, and the final group contains all the data, so 13. Now relative frequency, what it does is expresses each group as a proportion of the total. So what we have here is the total is 13, so we'll, in the first group, it has 5, so we write 5 over 13. Now you can leave it as a fraction or you can put it as a decimal. The next group will have 6 over 13, final group 2 over 13. Now if you were to add these all up, it would equal 13 over 13 or 1. So we're going to do an example that brings it all together. So right here we have a bunch of raw data showing the temperatures over a certain period of time. So the first thing we ask is what's the variable? Well, in this case, the variable is temperature. Now we ask, is it discrete or is it continuous? Well, temperature can take on an infinite number of values, so it's continuous. And that tells us that we're going to have to make a histogram. So we organize the data into a table. And because it's a histogram, everything has to be in ranges. So when you're doing a range of data, you have to make sure that all the ranges are the same. So each one of these increases by four. You can't have uneven ranges or else your data will be messed up. So we have the frequency and we get that by counting. So the numbers between 1 and 5. 1, 2, 3. So that's there. And so on for the rest of it. And now just to explain, we'll do cumulative and relative frequency as well. So we have the frequency here and now we do the cumulative. So remember, that's a running tally of all the previous data. So we have 3 in the first one, 5 in the next one. So at this point, we have eight data points. At this point, we have 13. So we keep adding up the previous ones. At this point, we have 15, 16. And then finally, we have the last data always contains all the points, so it's 18. And now relative frequency expresses each as a proportion of the total. So, and remember, you're going by frequency, not cumulative frequency when you do this. So we have three over 18 equals 0 0.167. 5 over 18 is 0.277. And we keep doing that. If we add these up, it should be about 1 or close to 1. It might be a bit over or a bit under because we were rounding. So we have all the data, and now we're going to make our histogram. Now when you make the histogram, you use only these two. You use the first one, the ranges, the temperature, and you use the frequency. 
You can make graphs out of cumulative and relative frequencies, but those are different ones. They're called frequency polygons. And it's basically just like a line graph where you put a point at the thing and connect it. But for now, we're going to focus on histograms. So here's the example of the histogram. So as you see, you have your labels, and you put your variable on the x-axis. And because it's a histogram, we put them in ranges. So I didn't use a ruler, but you're going to have to use a ruler in all your examples. You're going to have to make sure that each histogram, each bar, has the same width. So they can't be uneven. And you have to make sure this is a continuous scale. And then you put your frequency up here. And then you just make it like a bar graph and make sure that all the bars are touching because it's a continuous variable. And that's your example. 